I'm Amy Waters Burst and I'm head of the Languages Faculty in Brookhaven and this is Lois Burks who's head of um, PCH4 English. And um, we're coming at a slightly different angle because we didn't actually apply for funding to be part of um, Silicon Valley Literacy Project. What happened was we um, decided we wanted to get together as faculties English and MFL and Welsh and we invited all our sort of parents to come in to do an insert just for a morning to sort of generate some ideas. So we, we haven't got some research around now that because we're coming at it from a different angle. Okay. <coughs> um, so far I'm set coming to discuss women's uh, triplicity issues. We will be showing new strategies we've developed as a whole school level to raise both the profile, uh, profile and standards of literacy. Um, we came in as a, a very much together because we wanted this pupils to have strategies developed in English that they would see in MFL and then in English. Um, this was one strategy that we came up with and we came up with the name ourselves with help from the pupils so we didn't want to seem too down with the kids using wall book um, like Facebook but basically the way it works is um, in English we use it so if a pupil creates um, some impressive descriptive writing um, or uses some really juicy vocabulary we whack it on wall book, get it up on the wall and then other people can use it then um, and see how brilliant it is so we celebrate um, the success of, of their, their literacy skills in that way um, but Katie Llewellyn who's an MFL teacher is going to hopefully going to explain to you how it works in MFL All classrooms and languages have a wall book. This is where pupils can post new phrases or new words they found in a dictionary. It encourages the lower school to use phrases that perhaps the sixth form have found, or also the sixth, sixth form can also use phrases from the lower school. We also have an idiom of the week in French, Spanish and Welsh, and we challenge the pupils to use these in their lessons. The idiom of the week this week for Spanish is mi media naranja, which is my other half. And the French one for this week is Cherche Media Cartoseur to overcomplicate things. Um, this project, it was a common project across the faculties, MFL, Welsh and English. Um, and basically what we did, um, we delivered a series of lessons that were started um, in the English faculty. Um, and we chose an, an Amnesty International campaign, Kites for Women's Rights. Um, and we basically, in the English lessons, discussed with the girls what was happening um, to women and girls in Afghanistan um, before and during the Taliban rule and um, subsequent to the fall of the Taliban. Um, I gave them a PowerPoint, they learned about it, they discussed it, and then they were invited to design a kite um, on which they sort of supported women's rights in Afghanistan. Um, what we also had on the wall as well, though, as you can see, are some key words in English then um, in Welsh, French and Spanish as well. And the point of this as an English teacher was to get pupils to realise that their literacy skills are their responsibility to use in other lessons as well. Um, because I found that they tend to um, put their learning in English into a compartment and then go off to another subject and, and not use it again. Um, and as an anecdote, it came out in one of our um, joint meetings with MFL. And one of the, my colleagues in, in MFL said, well, you know, the girls don't know what a noun is. Well, they, they do, they just don't know what a noun is outside of their English classroom, um, you know, or outside of their, their French or Welsh classroom and inside their English classroom. So this was the point of, of this project. Um, and now I'm going to, I think I'm going to watch myself, which is really embarrassing. I haven't seen it yet, so at least I'm not wearing the same outfit, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, no. <laughs> what we're going to be th doing today is thinking about human rights issues in Afghanistan, okay, particularly women's human rights. This Kites for Women's Rights project was inspired by a triple literacy inset that the English faculty had along with uh, modern foreign languages and Welsh. And basically it was thought up to encourage pupils to, to view literacy as a cross-curricular entity rather than just limited to their English lessons. So it was based on an Amnesty International campaign and I think it was important for the girls to have a subject matter which gave them some kind of moral or ethical lessons and, and something they could really get to discussing, which they, they do. And also, with the triple literacy aspect of it and using different languages, it's important for them to see that no matter what language we speak in the world, we all deserve basic human rights. I think it works really well because it encourages pupils to view the links between different languages and gives them quite challenging vocabulary in both English and their other languages. And I think for the languages departments, it was interesting to get the girls talking about something that perhaps wouldn't come up in ordinary MFL and Welsh lessons, whereas in English we're often discussing these types of issues. 
each pair or three will be given a kite template okay and using some key vocabulary which I'm going to put up onto the board and I'm going to give you on sheets I would like you to express your opinions about women's rights in Afghanistan on your kite all right I want you to make sure it's eye-catching colorful and clear but why are we doing this oh because kite flying is a hobby in Afghanistan right they, they love to fly kites and women are allowed to make the kites but very often they're not allowed to actually fly them so our kite is a a show of solidarity and support for the women of Afghanistan, okay? Now, during your discussions and writing on your kite, you may wish to use some key words in English, super. I would like you to challenge yourselves, please, and try to use some key words in French, in Welsh, or in Spanish, or all three, okay? So I would like to hear some other languages in this classroom. I would certainly like to see them written on your kites. You can use any images you like, the inky finger, a dove of peace, anything, okay? To show your support for women and girls in Afghanistan. The finished product then were kites using the target vocabulary from all the languages that they learn at Bryn Havrim. Um, one thing that we were looking at as well was in the joint um, insert was we talked about dictionaries and using dictionaries and that the children get confused and don't know what to do. So we thought we'd make dictionaries interesting. So we came up with a snazzy name called Dictionary Divas to teach in all girls' school. So, um, and we actually have developed this and produced the resources across all the languages. Um, and we go to the LRC, the library, where we have um, a session where they sit on the bean bags and they just explore the different meanings and what they mean. So it's very much independent learning. So we'll show you Redini Mindy Edrich at Dictionary Divas. We're going to be having a look at Dictionary Divas, okay? Gwaith at a good idea you did on. To start with, can anybody tell me why dictionaries are so important? What did dictionary, dictionary Divas was created as a result of a Silt Cymru inset day focusing on triple literacy. As a department of languages, we decided that the focus on dictionary use within our school would be something that all pupils would benefit from. Uh, the pupils appear to be a lot more confident now after having a Dictionary Divas session. The quality of their work appears to be on a completely different level due to accuracy of spellings and grammar and punctuation. And say, Sneg, in English, can you give me an adverb to describe swimming or horse riding, please? What kind of adverb would we use to describe swimming or horse riding? Quickly. Quickly. And if on, edrychwch. And quickly, as well as that, quick or quickly. The pupils seem to be more independent learners through the introduction of this dictionary diva strategy, and also they've they've learned transferable skills that they're able to use across the curriculum. Hi, Ian. Okay. Now, Redwyshaichi, I'd like you with your partner, the Escriveni Browdeg. To com write a sentence for me using your verb and your adverb. Joy Livani, give me some sentence starters first of all. What's I like? Do you have What else can we have? During the activity, I asked the pupils to focus on verbs, adverbs, adjectives, and nouns that maybe they hadn't previously used, as I find pupils have a stock of words that they use regularly where they're not really learning any new words. And I just feel that a lot of the pupils have taken away from the activity a lot of adjectives, adverbs that they wouldn't have necessarily used without having a dictionary to refer to. Diane, think of the words you've taken away from this today just by having a flick through the dictionary. Yeah? The next thing we looked at was introduce new vocabulary. We're very conscious of introduce the vocab, doing the core repetition. We wanted actually the pupils to take on their own learning and look at the language patterns and look at how they can identify words themselves, but be able to explain why so they're understanding their learning and able to share that. So one thing that we've developed is when we introduce the vocabulary is we don't give them what it means. They have to work it out themselves using the grammar rules from um, Spanish, French and Russian English. Okay then, chicas, vamos a hacer un ejercicio con los trabajos, ¿vale? Tenemos, ok, aquí tenemos cuatro columnas en español, francés, gales y inglés, ¿vale? Y tenemos que poner los trabajos en las 
columnas correctas. ¿Qué tenemos que hacer? What do you think we have to do, girls? Any ideas? Holly? We have to put the right words into the right columns in English, Spanish, Welsh and French. Perfect, good girl. Okay, the triple literacy activity is a starter activity and it's designed, it was about jobs and it was designed basically to give them a flavour of all the different jobs in Spanish, French, Welsh and obviously English, with the end product being um, that they're able to write a piece, extended piece of writing on jobs, what they want to do in the future, what their parents are, that kind of idea. Um, we, can, we do it in lots of different topics and it's designed for pupils to look at um, the links between languages and look at cognates and look at grammar rules. It has an O. And that would be Spanish. Spanish. It's got an O. This would be... Yeah. Welsh for dentists. Yeah. Yeah. Did you say Spanish? Yeah. 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 Oh, 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 yeah.
children. Hey, fantastico, mm -hmm. muy bien. So in the future, I want to be a teacher in a school because it would be fun, okay? And I love working with kids, children. Muy bien, chicas. And now my last one, see how long it is, okay? So I've added, I've kept some bits the same, but I've added, porque desde mi punto de vista sería divertido, porque... Desde, um, desde mi punto de vista. Oh, yeah. In my opinion. In my opinion. Oh, no, um, Close. From my point of view. Muy bien. From my point of view, it would be fun. I've kept that the same. Me encanta trabajar con los niños. Sin embargo, no me gustaría ser médica porque en mi opinión sería demasiado difícil. Could you perhaps do a little part of that? Um, however, Muy bien. I would like to be a because, in my opinion... Okay, fantastico. Could anyone do the last bit then? In my opinion, sería demasiado difícil. It would be... Difficult? Difficult. Too difficult. Fantastico. Okay, so do you get the idea that each level, we are doing what? Extending it more. We are extending it more. So you're going to start with a, uh, una frase básica como ese. Quiero ser profesora. So how do you think you're going to work on improving it? And um, the final thing that we're going to do and talk about is the awesome nine, um, which is set phrases and starters in Spanish, French and Welsh, and they don't change and in English, they don't change. They stay the same, and all that changes is the topic, material. So the pupils know that they always have, I am, I, I'm not, and they just mix together the topic. So it gives them confidence because they know it's always there and they can encourage and arrange of sentences to be used. Who can tell me what you can see on the board? Should they see can they talk about uh, a great vocabulary? Great vocabulary. And what do we call this vocabulary? Because we've got um, awesome night. Awesome night. Fantastic. Do I know of any hands up if you can remember using this awesome night? Right. So, if you know any of the sentence patterns, you can basically talk about absolutely anything and can write in. Well, the idea of Awesome Nine came from an inset I attended. Okay. Right. I selected nine sentences which I thought were accessible to the lower abilities but still stretch individuals. These easily adaptable sentence patterns were enforced over a number of lessons. The strategy has had an extremely positive effect on the students in my class. It enables pupils of all abilities to create extended pieces of writing through the use of nine basic sentences. With little practice, I found that pupils are able to adapt and extend these sentence patterns in order to be able to talk about a vast range of topics. It has worked extremely well with more reluctant learners in Key Stage 4. By encouraging them to learn this range of patterns, they are able to convey their opinion on a variety of subjects. Oh, blankly now, in front of you now, you have a guide that new with, you have some new vocabulary. Demand topic new with, demand topic new with, this is the new topic. Looking at this, could you... So those are the ideas that we're putting into practice at the moment and they're in place and they're working really well. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you.